Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So today, we got a really cool project we're going to be working on. We're going to be making a clock type escapement. It's essentially a gear that drives the bulk of the movement for just about any old school mechanized system, like pre-1500s or so. Um, they're still used in some grandfather clocks today. So we're going to go ahead and make one. It's a very similar process to making like a gear. Um, we're making an escapement for a compu uh, mechanical computerized tic-tac-toe machine. And essentially what that does is it combines the components of about a 60-piece gear train into driving the overall system of the tic-tac-toe machine. And the main driving point of that is an escapement with a rack. And uh, the pallet fork rides on the escapement. And what that does is that provides the main drive system for the machine. So what we're starting out with is a piece of 2-inch diameter brass. And I have this set up in a collet block. But after turning this to size, I realized that I'm going to need to go ahead and use kind of a different fixed string technique for this or just start off with a different piece of brass because I'm going to run into clearance issues with this collet block. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take another piece of brass, turn it to size. I'll probably do that already before the video. Um, and then we'll go ahead and set it up on this Ellis indexing head. Now this is an Ellis dividing head. It's a 40 to 1 gear ratio. It's a 5 inch. takes more or less the same chucks as a South Bend 9 inch lathe. And this has several plates that we have for it here. And this chuck can, this disindexer can index just about any number of teeth or divisions you'd like on um, the, the bolt, on the circle patterns that are on this plate. Um, I'll go into describing a little bit more about the dividing head when we start getting into machining. But what we'll do is we'll take a piece, we'll secure it into the chuck, um, index a tool in directly over the part, set to a depth, then index in the amount of teeth we're looking for. Now the escapement we're making has kind of like a sun tooth pattern, not like an envelope, like a gear. So what we had to do is, I took a piece of 3 8 high speed steel in a horizontal fly cutter, which is exactly perpendicular. And what I did was, up close, I ground a radius on the end of a piece of high speed steel. And that radius will cut the profile of the, the uh, escapement we're looking for. And the, the escapement is going to be essentially I believe a 40 tooth mechanism will decide as we further in our design, but uh, we're going to set the escapement to a specific diameter. We're going to set each tooth, take it in probably two depths of cut. We'll use the Induma horizontal mill paired with this and probably a tail stock set up on here, or what is called a foot stock for a dividing head. And we'll go ahead and take cuts on this part and try to make an escapement. This is the first time for me. I've made a couple of years before in the past, but um, it's the first time using a handmade tool to make a cool shaped part. So let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to be making an escapement. Uh, this is a two inch diameter escapement right now and we have a hand ground cutter in here with a radius and this is for a mechanical computer tic-tac-toe machine that's one of the school projects and I have this centered so the flat end of the escapement cutter is perpendicular with the center axis of the uh, part itself and it's also not directly on center but that face is on center not the center of the cutter so I have the Ellis dividing head set up which 41 40 to 1 dividing head I have the tailstock piece of brass turned to size I calculated using SolidWorks that I need to be a depth of 172 thousandths and I need to cut 36 escapement teeth on here so I have the dividing plate set up and that is based off of the Ellis dividing chart that came with our dividing head. We go over to the number 36 and we see that we need to be in plate number 18 with one rotation and two holes. We have that pattern set up on the machine right now and we can go ahead and start cutting. So first thing I got to do is set my depth for this and we can start cutting gear teeth. I got it set in one position right now so once I set my uh, zero. I could set an indicator and set my depth. I'm going to take it in two passes So I'll take a hundred thou cut at first and then a 72 thou cut on the second pass around. So let's get started It's running at 300 rpm for brass. We're going to bring the table over and we're going to go ahead and crank the knee up till we're just touching off on the part
Okay, so we just touched off there. I'm gonna bring the table back out. And then we're gonna shut the machine off and we're gonna move up a hundred thousandths. And we're going to move the table up 100 thousandths. Okay, we're going to go ahead and lock the knee in place. And we'll turn the machine back on. Come in and then just engage power feed. And start cutting our first gear tooth. We're running at the slowest speed this machine can go right now because of the one tooth hand ground cutter. Um, it's not like a gear where I could run at a higher feed with a multiple tooth cutter. So I'm just going to take it slow so the high speed steel doesn't burn up and the tip doesn't wear out. direction and back out of this part. Now we'll index in another tooth. One rotation and two holes. Move the spider back into position. Bring the cutter back in and engage the power feed.
Okay guys, so here's the finished escapement pattern. And this is a top view directly down onto this part. And you can see the curved radius that the part has in relation to the cutter. I cut her in that direction. And that fits directly into the path. And you can see right here I honed in the tip on this, this cutting tool um, to have a radius on it. And that radius cuts the, um, the escapement pattern. And then from there we made a pretty large slug of this. We can make a couple just in case we had any errors in the future or needed a replacement. So what I did was I went ahead and took this chunk, chucked it up in the lathe and parted off one escapement which we're going to be using and it's an eighth of an inch thick. And here's the finished escapement. Let's let that focus. And uh, you can see the finished pattern on those teeth is really crisp. Um, they're, they're pretty sharp. It's a perfectly machined escapement and I'm really proud of this for the first time doing something along these lines. We got an eighth inch reamed hole in the center and the escapement should be absolutely perfect for the pallet fork we have set up that we have to machine and I hope this part functions just as good as it looks because this is really a cool part and it's amazing that using a hand ground cutter like this we can produce just about anything you want with an indexing head. It almost looks like a ratcheting mechanism but essentially there's a pallet fork that rides along the top and engages on each one of these teeth similar to like an antique mechanism or a clock mechanism so it's really cool a lot of the times in old olden days these were hand filed um, just having modern machinery now a bench grinder a little surface grinder and a piece of high speed steel we can automate this and essentially make a part that um, probably hasn't been made in a school like this in either ever or in the last hundred years okay guys so we got our finished part here the escapement's all done and we still have enough stock to part off about two more of these in the future if we want to replace them or if they get worn out. 
Um, it was really fun making this project, and I know this is a pretty complex project for a college level project, but I'm glad to be able to do it. Um, get to practice using my indexing head a little bit more. I've got a bigger indexing head coming for this. It's a nice big 10 inch Victoria. And I have a spiral attachment for that, for spiral milling attachment for that, and we'll be able to do all sorts of cool patterns on there, and we'll try to get some spiral bevel gears made probably in the future. But uh, this is kind of a big step for me as a machining, uh, as a machinist, because I've never made anything along these lines before, and I probably never will have to. But uh, getting the chance to make one of these with a hand ground tool out of just a piece of brass, it's really amazing. And to get one that this high quality, I'm really impressed. Um, so I will show you the pallet fork mechanism in a future video or the entire machine working in the future. But uh, if you guys really, I really hope you guys enjoy this. If you like more of this content, please subscribe and like this video. And I'd like to thank everyone for all of their support on my both my Instagram page and here on YouTube. I am pretty new to YouTube, but uh, I'd like to get more videos posted. It's just a very busy schedule here at WPI. And uh, I'll get back to work and make some more videos. So long for now.